<laughs> nice emotes. What's up, guys? Acerbate. Whenever I click, it seems like I clicked the wrong number. Acerbate, what's up, buddy? Welcome to Weird Wednesday. We got a challenge from Big Money. You guys were playing Weird Wednesday, it means unusual openings. Don't let me forget as we're getting started here. Play different stuff. Um, try to be creative. And the usual time controls. So something between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3. I'm accepting challenges from players. First off, the subscribers. Then other non subscribers. As long as it's casual, you've got 100 games. Let's get started with this challenge from Big Money. So, Big Money. Playing in the tournament, Astrobate yesterday playing in my tournament. We finished third, I finished third. And Zen Chess and the Arms tied for first. What's up? Good luck. <clears throat> Monday morning here. Waiting for big money to get started. <coughs> <coughs> oh, what's up with me? All right, guys, two weeks till I move back to tentatively fly back to the United States. So in a little over two weeks, we'll probably start streaming from USA time. I wanted to play more E5. Let's play something unusual here. You can play the Latvian. It's always fun. Unfortunately, Big Money might know this. We'll have to live with it. But he plays d3. <clears throat> okay, very quiet move by White. If you take on on f5, I just play d5 now. So this seems already good for black. I mean, I guess you could take on f5 and try to play g4. E takes f, d5, g4, h5. That already seems good for black. Any kind of weird lines like EF D5 G4 H5 or EF D5 Queen E2. Probably nothing. He's just trying to develop pieces. I don't know about this move actually. <clears throat> now I can play bishop g5, yeah. Okay, it shouldn't be a problem. I feel like I'm playing the, Ch he's playing the Chigorin actually. It's like a Chigorin on the other side of the board. <laughs> <coughs> All right, <clears throat> just waking up chess, chess wise. I've been awake for a while, but chessically, Read the news, checked my email, had breakfast. But chess brain is not ready yet. Please subscribe to support the stream. Guys, donate, support the stream, subscribe, check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. Um, okay, so this I was thinking about before. I mentioned briefly. I mean, I don't think he can seriously consider castling queen side here. Maybe he wants to take with a queen on e4. Seems pretty pretty reasonable. I was thinking first instinct just to castle. <clears throat> then I thought, okay, let's protect the pawn on f5. can always castle. <clears throat> G3. Step out of the pin into a brave new day here with queen e8 grand prix attack 
basically just another Grand Prix attack. <coughs> the Latvian is nothing other than the Grand Prix attack against e4. e4, e5, Grand Prix attack. Yes, I do give take backs for obvious mouse slips, especially in a casual game. Smash the pawns. <coughs> And now I guess we just start playing what I would say is strategically based on the pawn structure. This, maybe not a big deal. Can always use king h8. <clears throat> Reminds me a little bit of my game with Morwa yesterday. <clears throat> so if um, if c4 now, maybe something like queen h5. I don't know if anyone watched the tournament yesterday. Of course you intended castling. I'm not the kind of person who would not give a take back even in a rated game i mean if it's if it's obvious you know if i'm sure that was really a math mouse slip i'll give take backs i mean if not if it's like 10 seconds left and, and we're playing for time but in an early part of the game like this when i don't have a lost position or something i will if i have a completely lost position i might not give a take back because then it seems like well it might as well just resign you know um H4. Very weakening move. I think he should probably consider exchanging on F6 there. Okay, anyway. What do we do now? I thought you'd see it your way. <clears throat> A4, wow. I can't, I keep making my mind, like, what plan I'm, I'm using here. <laughs> All right, let's just forget about that. Let's forget about the niceties of pawn structure for a moment. This is a little more important. Queen e3, knight e4. Does he have tricks there? This diagonal. Queen is slightly more exposed on d3. We get all the pieces in the game. This queen, for example, now vulnerable to bishop e2 which it would not be in other instances on e3. <clears throat> there are certain things about e3 that might not be good as well, and they come to g4 later. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bishop e6, f4. Pretty crazy. Maybe even bishop c8 is a good move. All right. <clears throat> If f4, I take and take on h4. But he still has play. Yeah, I don't think I should even necessarily take on f4. Not playing this game very clearly. Wow. I think you need to take with the pawn there. This leaves black with a very much superior pawn structure. Yeah, Uber driver. I mean, if he takes with the pawn, I mean, I don't think I can even take on h4 because e5 is so dangerous. Threatening rook takes f6. Now I'm just eating this pawn. Ponda. <clears throat> I don't ask for that much. But I played this game really inconsistently. Allowing f4. Thing is just completely out of control after that. The whole situation. Actually, he can take now. I'm still better there. Rook e5 takes, bishop f8, rook f8, knight f3, knight g4. Actually, knight f3, rook e8, black is pawn up. I'm not sure I should have allowed that. Very sloppy play by me thus far in today's show. <clears throat> the white structure and bishops finally shut down. Correct. If you look just a few moves ago, you played f4. Okay, the computer saw something I missed, of course, which is pawn takes pawn, queen h4, e5, knight h5. Ye of little faith. <clears throat> I just saw the fork here and the detonation on d6 and assumed it was good for white, but actually. Probably I would have found it, but um, knight h5 hadn't occurred to me. So, luckily for me, I was alright there. But I felt I was vacillating back and forth between playing for pawn structure and playing for some kind of kingside attack, and I didn't have a very clear handle of the game. Acerbate Ayeste. Juicebox, good morning. From Cambodia. Good morning from Budapest. Good morning to Cambodia. Welcome guys. Tomorrow night's a subscriber stream, so 7.30 p.m., excuse me, 6.30 p.m. European time, Central European time, summer. C-E-S-T, weird openings. All right, focus. Um, yes, the Saragossa opening. This is for Fuchsia. I don't know if she's here. <clears throat> Surprisingly, he played b6. Now what do we do? You have a date this weekend. We played the Saragossa opening for you. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, but b6, I don't know. I'm looking for something original here. Don't want to just turn it into a London system. 
Horse swim for weight. Choose box. What will what will your girlfriend say? Stupid question. I won't go there. <clears throat> All right. What are we gonna do? I think I think I'm in Zuzwang. No, I have to play e4, I guess. You can play d4 or e4. Knight f3 doesn't seem to have any value. Um, the original. Queen a4 and knight a3. The squirrel. I think this is something like the squirrel. When you play knight a3, queen e2. That's what Jack Young used to call it. Does anyone know for sure? About the squirrel? Gathering nuts and bringing them back to the to the nest. Um, the motion of the night, like a squirrel. Basically, a closed Sicilian, closed French, big, big clamp. <clears throat> right, the first purveyor of the hillbilly attack. Exactly, Uber driver. That's where it all started. You know, little did he know, Simon Williams would one day play the, the hillbilly attack. So this is what I refer to as the big clamp against the Sicilian, also known as the car. You have like this car-shaped pawn formation. It kind of looks like. You really need to go here. Um, it looks like a kind of 80s car, I think. This levels. You could also refer to it as steps. Yeah, that's a good point, Uber driver. It's actually kind of annoying facing that, I realize. It's not that stupid. I played a couple of games where I declined the gambit, basically, in the Karol Khan Hibili attack. e4, c6, bishop c4, d5, bishop b3, and I just, like, didn't know what to do, so... I don't really want to take the pawn and lose the initiative, at least in blitz, so I play, like, e6, just to frustrate white, but it's not very good. Okay, so f5, you ask for it, and you got it. Master B. Experimenting with almost a hippo. The almost hippo. But it's actually with this, this pawn out on C5. It's kind of a three-legged hippo. The refutation of the hillbilly attack is C6. Oh, what did you say? A5. A5. No, but actually, Fuchsia, that kind of reminds me of some lines in the, in the bishop's opening. There's a very, very early... A5 line in the bishop's opening. It's pretty similar to that. The same idea. Did you mention something about knight a3? <clears throat> I think there are more important things in life. Going right for the jugular. Exchange sacrifice. Well, we can just win the old exchange. I know that it's lame. But I don't see anything convincingly better. I mean, bishop h3, probably not bad. We're keeping, keeping it simple. What are you talking about, Uber driver? Black's prepared to castle queenside. 
But surely Carter didn't play the Karo Khan. Surely. JC. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm missing the boat, guys. You see, this is my problem sometimes. I'm just too too refined. We need to just learn to be primitive. Just be primitive. You don't expect to just win a piece like that, you know? The hillbilly accepted. It's hard to believe. Well, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Uber driver, but I'm sure that John Curto I knew didn't play the Carol Khan. All right. My bishop trapped yet? Astrobe, this doesn't look good, man. I mean, obviously, I could just trade queens. Oh, no. It almost works. I want to play rook f7. <laughs> it doesn't work. We'll set it up. Setting up rook f7 still doesn't work. Now it definitely doesn't work. Welcome guys. All right, <clears throat> just die. It's like a zombie apocalypse. <clears throat> Merle Dixon. Master Bate just won't, won't give up. Masturbate has learned that no games are won by resigning. And he's right. He's a fighter. Can never be too careful. Yeah. I like that B file. Oh, <laughs> baby. That's good. He's losing it. So, run of the mill here. In between move. King sandwich. All right, that was entertaining. Always bring a smile on my face. <laughs> Iesta, Uber driver, Iesta. We'll play these guys first. Being subscribers. But let me forget the Saragossa opening. White again. We'll have to play E4, F4. But I actually got three draws against him. <clears throat> he played f4. He does play f4. Did. Fide Master John Curto. I guess he doesn't play anymore. Must be pretty old by now. Beat me when he was like in his 70s. He must have been 75 when I lost the last time. That was really pretty embarrassing. Every time I thought he was done, he would just keep keep coming back e4 e5 d4 the uber driver how's cousin merle Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<clears throat> Not such an unusual opening, technically, but Halloween Frankenstein, he probably knows this. Dracula Frankenstein, whatever it is, Bishop C4, Knight E4, Queen H5. You're talking about Merle? Bishop c5, ah, solid move. This is like one of Aliekin's first games <clears throat> in this line. The very young Aliokin. He has a nice game. Astrobate says, what? My opponent's supposedly only 2,500. Right, stopping bishop g5. That was the Ayokin game. Well, I mean, f4 is the main line, but I wanted to play something less common. Okay, let's try something weird. <clears throat> the ghost of Carl Schlechter. Has to be. What are you talking about? Are you talking about me or someone else? Everyone should own a copy of the classic Five Hundred Master Games of Chess by Tartakover. Very good collection of games. Schlichter. Maybe I should just play like ninety two. Queen F three. Creative Vienna game maneuver. Focusing on the D5 point. <clears throat> now I'm a little concerned he can play Bishop G4 and just actually trade it off. Well, that's probably not that good. For Of course I was referring to you. Two games over 100 moves in that match. Nice. Now where do we go? F2 or G3? I was a little bothered by the fact that he can trade this off at all, actually. And now my knight doesn't have anywhere to go. Yeah, there's something weird about what I did here. I guess I should go to f2, give the knight g3. Maybe queen f3 is just not good. Yeah, now we have some issues. How about rook f2, b5? That's getting awkward as well. I think I screwed this up. I mean, still white should be okay. How do I meet this? A4, D5. That's kind of a weird position. A4, D5. A4. 
bishop e2, knight e2, d5, a4, d5, e, d5, pawn d5. What am I thinking? Bishop b3. We're gonna end up losing a piece, like. Down to a minute. I mean, d4 was a move for white. And then the. This whole maneuver with queen f3 was probably a bit much. I wasted too much time. It's a little bit awkward. It also has b5, b4. I'm lucky if my bishop doesn't get trapped. d5, take, take, bishop b3. Doesn't seem like a big problem. This is kind of a surprising move. All right. At least I don't have to worry about knight h5, knight f4. <laughs> it's always good. Even this is possible. Math. Ma. Ma, Karl Ma, math study. I'm trying to de de decipher what Asturbate is saying. All right, nice knight, really well placed here in tandem with my queen, has a lot of places to go. So happy about this, coordinated force. Somewhat unsound. No, that wasn't new. Okay, guys, we've got um, subscriber stream tomorrow night. Weird openings, blitz, and rapid here for another two hours. Yeah, Uber Driver, that's the best book. That's the greatest book for beginners to learn, like, ch checkmate combinations. Yeah, Dover, classic. I picked it up in, like, a used bookstore many years ago. Later, I would use that to teach the kids in the schools and stuff it's um really good classic book on like ch classic checkmate patterns just classic overuse that word carl selector was big on pawn structure bye fuchsia Thanks for joining us. Just in time for your for your Saragossa opening. <laughs> Where is everybody? It's either too early or too late. Depends on where you are. I guess if you're in Australia, it's just right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> is, um, who was here? Juicebox. Juicebox must have gone out for his date. You might feel a slight pinch. It's not fair if this if this holds for black.
Never realized like what a bullet guy I guess there really was. Till recently. Somebody's laying on the horn. That's very unusual. Hmm. Well, I'm lucky he played that. Wow, they're really hitting the horn out there. What is going on? Never hear this like road rage sort of stuff like in America. Wow, it's like double now. Looks better. He lost on time? What? That's just weird. He's usually much faster than me. He must have just got into the position and, and lost his concept of reality. All right, Uber driver. Cousin of Merle. I keep getting white every game. Yeah, the F4. Not a good move, really, but it's fun. <clears throat> G5, maybe. Just G6. Professional. A professional move. All right, we'll see what black does. It's basically a Sicilian. Sicilian or Dutch, depending. It's like an English against the Dutch. Stating the obvious is my specialty. <laughs> All right, just for something different. Knight c3 is not such a common move. Could play knight e5. Yerun was here, our former moderator, former moderator. I kind of like B6. Merle, there's Merle now. Thanks for the donation, man. Your cousin Uber driver is here. He's been chatting up the stream. I want to play like F5 somehow.
More common for me to be black in this type of Sicilian, close Sicilian ish. I haven't actually played e4, but it's there in spirit, you know. I played e4 in spirit, even though I haven't actually played e4. It's still a Sicilian. Twitch did not notify you of the live stream. Amazing. Man, I need more coffee. One little coffee wasn't wasn't enough. I think I'm gonna have to do like a crowdfunding page for a espresso make espresso maker, something. <clears throat> All right, D five, F five. Now it's, well, it's technically a Dutch. Guess I should play e4. Certainly not forced though. f5, I just lose a pawn. Black hasn't even castled yet. Knight h4, e6. I feel, like, I feel like I'm playing against myself. I know what I would do. That's what I would do. Some people prefer the space, maybe, with d4, but not me. Not me. Just a weird close Sicilian now. When you think about it, that the the bird's opening is basically a closed Sicilian that kind of loses its mystique. Interesting move here. Knight e5, queen d4 check, king h1. Ninety five is not exactly a developing move of a classical sense. <clears throat> and King H one seems stupid. He just trades. What would Patrick Wolf do? I recently saw some random tournament, I guess, from San Francisco on chessbomb.com. And I noticed like Patrick Wolf was playing a bunch of random people and like he had one game where he played the birds opening with white. <laughs> I was like, what? what? Um, that's what happens when you quit chess. All right, knight f6. So he almost lost to like some random player playing the birds opening. Could happen to me too. <clears throat> Patrick Wolf was like a former US champion who quit chess to go into some sort of financial industry stuff, I guess. I don't know. Knight f6. What do we do? Knight g5, anyone? Just not developing? No. That's not right. What is right here? I hate the closed Sicilian. Maybe I just take. I don't know. It took me like half an hour to find a reasonable move. Simply trading my pieces. Very, very impressive. Made F2. Brother Daryl. So knight e5, bishop e5, pawn e5, queen check, king h1, queen e5. Doesn't have to do that though. But 
but nevertheless, it's an interesting pawn sacrifice. Really uber drivers. Uber driver seems like ultra correct. Panda. No H4 in this game. I really miss Infinite Flash Chess. I like it when he he draws attention to me in the stream. Without him, it's just, it's not the same. Well, I saw he was streaming earlier, Panda. Maybe he'll, he'll come by with a raid. And I need to wake up. All right, tomorrow night, subscriber stream, guys. Please submit your games. I'll send a reminder to everybody. I've got submissions from for tomorrow night's stream at 6.30 from Tobias, <clears throat> a.k.a. Ibadis, and Big Money so far. Asterby, did you send in a game? My precious. That was a really bad golem imitation. I need to work on it a lot. Or maybe just never, ever try to do that again. The precious. The pawn on e5. Yeah, that would be pretty greedy. Queen c7 is kind of a no-brainer. Okay, I'm just running out of time making random moves now. Hunter gatherer. I never did manage to achieve F5. Never too late. This is so lame. <clears throat> got literally nothing. The proverbial less than nothing. Blacks made a lot of mistakes here. <laughs> White, a few as well. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I don't know. This didn't go well. So, it started when I started trading pieces, but I didn't know what to do anymore after knight f6. Someone suggested knight f2. I have no clue. I guess why it's just worse. H five, of course. H3 would be a little more prudent. 
at that point. Down to our increments. Black is slightly better. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, h4 is a really bad move. I should just play h3. Stupid. Very stupid. I don't know what got into me. Very boring and very stupid. This move. Fixing these pawns. I figured, okay, it doesn't matter. But anyway, it still would be better to maintain flexibility in h3, and I would have the possibility of playing g4 later. Now I have no no flexibility, no break, you know, nothing to do. I could open up the king side here with king g2, h3, g4. Maybe even play for a win. Now we have no such possibility against the mysterious Uber driver. See, but he does, he does. This is not gonna be pretty. Well, I timed out. Oh my God, I forgot about the clock. <laughs> anyway, I'm worse here. This is the problem. Bishop e2, bishop d4 check. And I'm, I mean, I'm essentially facing b5 and invasion along the a file here. So I can't, I can't take on d4 without getting pummeled on c2. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be like kind of awkward for white to protect this and, and defend this position. But I completely forgot about the clock. I was like, oh yeah, I've got I've got time. This is just analysis though, the end of the game here. After rook d eight. A four is game. Well A four was the move was the move I played, right? And here I was thinking move 21. So Uber driver, zero inaccuracy, zero mistakes, zero blunders, six cent upon loss. It's pretty, pretty shabby. Seven cent upon loss, that's, that's bad. I was 10 cent upon loss. Okay. Who are these players? We played once before. This player, I don't remember. London System Club, that's bad. Um, AP87, okay. Man, I'm extremely thirsty. Sorry, Uber driver, you're just too good. Too good. You can't beat someone who doesn't make mistakes, but I, I shouldn't lose on time there. Okay. Yeah, I think my time management not really optimal. I need a second coffee. Okay, so we played uh, we played the Laughing Gambit, but let's try something else. I want to play the black side of the Roy Lopez, but I mean this is hardly a weird opening, so I have to play the Schliemann. I just like playing F five related gambits. Yeah, I mean, d3 is, is not a bad idea, I think. All the theory says that you're supposed to play knight c3, but playing that with white uh, quite a bit now, I found it's kind of tricky. Last game was 5 plus 3. That that was sort of... Was it 7 plus 3 or 5 plus 3 there, Merle? I mean, Uber driver. Whatever. Whatever version you are. What about d6 here? Why do I even have to go with anything fancy. 
I think it was 7-3. My time seemed to go out pretty fast. I sat there for three minutes thinking about what to play on. I just hate the closed Sicilian. I hate ending up in that kind of position. How can I play the birds opening <coughs> without ending up in a closed Sicilian? That's what I want to know. Um, I don't want to play f4 if I just end up playing the white side of a closed Sicilian. You definitely have chances, Uber Driver. <laughs> The only times I've ever won when I managed to like flag you. Pawn on c3 instead of the knight. Just a different kind of closed Sicilian. Wow, bishop c4. Outside the box. So knight a5, an extreme, extreme move. There was like a very old Steinitz game, I remember, where he, he did, I think he did, I think he literally did play f5 against the Joko Piano, which I did here on Weird Wednesday in the past. Really no choice now. Now we can take this when we want to take it. I'm not gonna take you. Just gonna take you. All right. We'll take it on my terms. You'll take it when I tell you to take it. What's up, Antonio? You missed my epic loss on time. Yeah, I had the same experience, Bozo the Clown. I've had the same experience recently. It's kind of a weird Schliemann. The Russians call it... Oh, what is it now? The Yanish, maybe it's not a Russian thing. What is the Yan? What is Yan? Who is Yanish, by the way? Uber driver seems to know a lot of chess history. <clears throat> Besides being almost unbeatable, it's a sideways smile. Usually, this is the central. It's more central. This this smile needs braces. Some sort of dental correction. Dental correction. Um, I'm strange. I, I see shapes in the pawn structures. I know that's a bit weird. Knight d5. That would leave my knight out there. Let's just do this. Enough is enough. Now we can castle. I might want to play a5 though. So my pawn doesn't become completely backwards on a7. Do I want to play bishop g4 or do I want to not and say I did? I guess this restricts queen b1. <clears throat> you did polgar. Did queen b8 in the king's indian sometimes. It's a Latvian. No, it's a Schleiman. So I was saying, Merle, I mean Uber driver, that um, whatever your name is. Who is Yanish that the opening is named for? Bishop f6, bishop d1, bishop e7. Absolutely. Great suggestion. Okay, so f3. Next, crap question. 
f3, bishop e6, or bishop d7. <sighs> the bishop's better placed in terms of activity, but more exposed on e6. I've been toying with this maneuver knight d5 for a long time, but I never found a moment to, to implement it. I'm guaranteed to trade my bad bishop for his good bishop. White still has a very strong square here on e4. Janish has something to do with the Petrov. Yeah, this was the one thing about inducing f3 that I thought, okay, maybe it helps him because he can like Put a knight in f5, essentially. There's a lot of weaknesses in White's position, but he's not done yet. Yeah, see that? Knight takes up residence on e4. Which could be... Problematic, Osh. As we say here in Magyar Ursag, Magyar Ursag, Hungary. In other words, guys, I'm leaving Hungary for the summer. We're going to be moving the stream to the US of A. You're not going to castle queenside. You wouldn't do a crazy thing like that, right? We'll just play this super technically. He's not crazy. Almost want to play h5. Queen h4 check, queen f2 now. I don't really want to trade queens. Wikipedia article. Help develop Petrov's defense. Okay, he can't castle because the bishop takes g4. If he takes on a5, rook takes f3. This is the same thing. It was very warm here. It was like summer on Easter incredibly warm. I was joking about climate change. But it's back to normal now. Normal being like mild but a little cool. What it should be. Back to what it should be. This does not look real good for white. No, I'm not really looking forward to the weather in, in like Massachusetts, which I'll be facing if I go back in two weeks. Hungary is nice this type of time of year, Budapest, much warmer than the Northeast United States. But the summer gets kind of unbearable. I imagine the summer here is comparable to something like the Southern Mid-Atlantic, Mid -Atlantic, like Baltimore or even further south gets really really hot and humid I don't want to be here in the summer
I'm going to be spending the summer in Massachusetts, which I usually do anyway, the last 10 years or so. So if anybody wants to buy a house, let me know. All right. Start eating pawns. Got lots of good stuff to sell. Does anybody know? I have to learn about eBay. Selling things on eBay would be my job this summer. <clears throat> okay. Queen D2 check. Eating pawns is my job. End of Rook. Texas. Like someone on sound, one of our regulars here, was in Austin. All right. Let's play. AP87. Um, let's try D4 and something unusual here. I'm, I'm trying to play openings that I don't normally play. Small audience today, just 28 players. Usually people start waking up around now. We, uh, we increase our viewership. Fuchsia's back. You've seen 24 piece chess sets on eBay. One, two, three, four, five. Is that like Star Trek chess or something? E5. Yeah, actually, I think he's played this before. I'm gonna have to start selling stuff on eBay. Never, I've never sold anything on eBay before. I'm a little bit scared. All right, we'll take the pawn. It's a, it's basically what is this? Um, Black Mardimer reversed <laughs> essentially. Queen F6, not, not normal, but. Yeah, you could also look at it as, as a weird sort of... Yeah, Blackmore Deemer with Queen F3. So how does the 24 chess, 24 piece chess set work? 24 pieces. But I don't understand, like... It's like one and a half players? Or is that just one side, Fuchsia? What are they just missing? <laughs> They're missing eight pieces. Discount. 24 chess, chess piece set discounted. Chess master friend of mine in Boston. Always taught me. He was big on counting your pieces before you put them away, Fuchsia. Always count your pieces, Infinite Flash Chess before you put them back in the bag. Then you don't lose any, you don't have to sell. You don't have to sell 24 piece chess sets <laughs> on eBay. Um, all right, I'm gonna start laughing at stupid stuff again. I do that all the time. When I start laughing, it's gotta be something really, really dumb. <clears throat> Clowers Universe is rating with a party of 19. <clears throat> wow. Totally new to the stream, Clower's Universe, as far as I know. I was actually just expecting, um, I was expecting you to raid Infinite Flash Chess. Instead, we have a raid from Clower's Universe. Awesome. Thank you. Raid sounds so violent, you know, like a pirate raid. It doesn't sound like something you should be saying thank you for. Here we are. Um, Night C6, <coughs> what's wrong with me? All right, knight c6. He's trying to be creative, sacrificing a pawn. Um, AP is an uncompromising style attacking player, but they go a little too crazy oftentimes. Thank you for the raid, guys. 
Clower's Universe. Party of 19. I don't know if we have enough tables for that. You guys check in the back. I always wanted to like open a chess studio. I even thought about doing it here, but it just doesn't seem like a business that, it seems like a business that's like very likely to fail or not even be profitable. But I always had this kind of, you know, nostalgia that it would be cool to have my own chess studio. I don't know if it would work. It's never been a profitable sport. This is true. I mean, a lot of chess shops in like New York City, chess studio type places have have worked, but usually not for a very long time. But I don't know if it would work in Budapest, where I where I am. Where I am now a days. Where did this thought come from? I don't know. My brain works in mysterious ways. I don't know why I even brought this up, actually. Rent is a problem. Well, I mean, that's why Budapest would be better, but. Yeah, in a major city like New York or Boston, it's so expensive. That's why all chess clubs went out of business. No money to pay the rent. I only speak Hungarian and English, and my Hungarian's not that good. Okay, I understand Spanish a little bit, and Russian a little bit, but I really am not a linguist. He stays alive with 97. I have no talent for languages, Bozo the Clown. My Russian professor, <laughs> my Russian professor at Boston University was like doing me the greatest favor of my life when they let me pass. Um, I'm really, really bad in languages. I know GDE seven. I should have just stuck with Spanish in the first place. Oh, I dropped a piece. Oh, Antonio, you went to BU? No way. That's that's crazy. I know that you said you were in Boston, but um, you got your PhD at Boston University. In languages. <laughs> he helped me pass now. It's funny that you did, you studied economics, because I actually, I was doing under undergrad economics at BU, and, and I eventually switched to psychology. So for two years, I studied at the Boston University Economics Department as an undergrad, before I gave it up. That's really funny, we never, we never discovered that. I mean, I know you mentioned that you had been in Boston, but, like, way later than I was there. Obviously, not at the same time. Um, that's crazy. That's cool. So, when I was in Boston studying, I don't think there was even a chess club. They, they it's a large university. They didn't even have a chess club till I graduated. After I graduated, then it was kind of lame. More useful. <laughs> I don't know, man. All right, D5. Black is staying with us. So we need to protect. Black's having a little trouble mobilizing these pieces over there. All my pieces are in the game. I've got C4. Almost ready to go. Uh-huh. I don't think I ever met that guy, Uber driver. Someone, I heard someone mention that. Maybe I did.
Yeah, a lot of math professors are into chess, obviously. International master Ed Formanic was a math professor at Penn State. He's probably still around. I always tell my math joke. <laughs> Everybody you meet at parties thinks that chess players are automatically good at math. That's not a good assumption, though. Okay. Staying alive with AP87. <coughs> Back to Boston. No. I don't live in Boston. I live in southeastern Mass when I'm over there. But maybe I'll get up to Boston to visit this year. We'll see. Queen A4. Come on. Now we've got to have something. But knight d5, knight c6. Queen c6. He's keeping it together. I also had like bishop h3 checks sometimes. <laughs> he lost his mind. What? Yeah, 96 bishop h3 stuff. I agree, Antonio. It was possible to throw that in. No, he's just forgot that he's losing a piece. Okay, guys, we got another hour, so plenty of time for challenges. Merle Dixon made a donation. He's up to 200 in bit donations. Extra pieces are good. Infinite Flash, how you doing? How'd your stream go? Saw you streaming earlier. Nickname? Sludgy. Sludgy was a nickname of my dog. Then it became my poker handle and just general screen screen nickname. So I I made it the the Twitch screen name as well. Um It was a it was a dog's nickname. Now it's mine. Stealing from the dog. Okay. Morales is up next. And ten year old who's very solid. I need another coffee. Alexa. Alexa's not here. can get Alexa on the phone. Alexa, who is the world chess champion? Viswanathan. Alexa, you need to learn how to pronounce stuff properly. You're worse than me. Viswanathan, is that correct? Here I am, Morales again, with another weird close Sicilian, but he's playing the strange setup with c4. So I didn't play a weird opening in this game. New follower from Argentina, Manu Spurs, 2002. You're playing the weird setup, man. C4, F4, and, and, and E4. That's weird for you. Okay, I'm going to play A6 and sack a pawn.
What time is it? Is, is it in Argentina? <clears throat> I guess it depends, right? You guys have one time zone, actually. Probably something like. Is it like Pacific time there? I don't know how it works. Okay, night F3. Sacrificing a pawn? If you dare. The Banco Gambit style idea here. We never get too many viewers from, from South America. Must be like middle of the night. A4. Trying to establish a knight on B5? Now he has a pass pawn. Actually, he can play knight B5. Might even be a good move. Maybe I made a terrible mistake there. I mean, obviously I could take on A4. He played knight to D5. Headed back here. But structurally, White's position looks kind of questionable. We have questions about White's structure. He has a protected pass pawn if he plays b3 at some point. So it's to a622 in Buenos Aires. Early morning. Time to go to work. Yeah, I'd like to visit Argentina one day. One of the countries in South America I'd like, like to see. Um, all right, but anyway. One day. I know a bunch of Argentinian chess players, but I haven't seen any of them in years. Used to be a lot of Argentine players would go to Spain and even move there. Probably still the case. Okay, what's happening here? He's trying to lock it all up. I'm a little bit afraid of him playing bishop e2 and trading off my kingside defender, bishop on g7. That's like what he wants, I think. No, you're not going to do that. I'm going to make sure I maintain control of d4. He could play f5 here, try to sacrifice a pawn. I think black. Maybe we have to be careful about king and pawn endgames. <laughs> this pawn is like winning in the endgame. Morales has his systems and, and he's good at what he knows. But here he's experimenting with something new. I think in the spirit of the stream... Well, this, this is your fourth raid. Is that your channel? Your Clowers universe? Oh, there's a raid coming. Your classical guitar teacher, but is that your, is that your channel? Or someone else? Oh yeah. No, Argentina, ha Argentina, Argentina has a good following, a good chess culture. At least they traditionally did do. Fisher had a big connection with Argentina. A lot of history. Eliakin actually played a lot of simuls in like Argentina and stuff. Big chess culture. Okay. What am I doing now? That sucks. It's like he's trying to lock it down. Another player who loves closed positions. But Morales isn't as bad as some people. Classical guitar, that's awesome. I had a friend who used to play classical guitar, but he ended up doing other stuff. 
Why so serious is raiding with a party of 45? Wow. Party of 45 for serious. For this game, man, this ugly position I've got here. Oh, what am I doing? All right, get rid of that knight. Gather around the table, kids. Here comes why so serious. The second raid of the day. Fisher played his first random game in La Plata. That's cool. Mar de La Plata. The King's Indian. What's going on? We just like won a pawn for nothing. That's awesome. So Morales kind of lost his concentration. Free pawns for everybody. Wow. What's up, why so serious? Why so serious? How can I open this long diagonal? Hmm. At the end of the day, you know what's coming. The A pawn. Let's just go for it. Known to go for it. Gotta go for it. Play where we have a strong... Strong pawn entity. Calculate, calculate, calculate. And he's got nasty tricks there. I'm about to lose on time. He just blundered. That was lucky. I don't know what's going on here. I mean, I know what's going on here, but on the previous move. So I'm apparently winning, but I wasn't confident here. I was prepared to do this, but I guess I wasn't 100% sure. I guess it's all good. Lack of self-confidence. But you were lost anyway. I would have lost on time though. It would be my second time loss. I think your position was fine actually. 95. Apparently this was a good move by me. Huh. All right, better than I thought. I'm a pessimist. So what happened to What happened to why so serious? He got caught into the he got caught in the Twitch void. He's still on his way. Ten year old. Maybe maybe I had to run. Alright. Anyway, thank you for the raid. Why so serious? Handing off the baton of the all night chess streamer to the European. He's connecting the United States to Europe. You're like a, like a reverse world explorer. Alright. 10 year old this guy's really solid despite he doesn't have a good score against me um most of the games are really hard fought against 10 year old weird openings i'm supposed to play that's the theme but that doesn't mean like really crap openings i mean just stuff that i normally don't do different stuff the panda king's gambit we didn't have today I think I must have played this against 10 year old at least once. This is our mascot. I really like to play H4, but it's not good. <laughs> in the King's Gambit, it's not really. But later, okay? Like in the main line with G5, we can play H4. That's true. Nobody ever plays Pawn Takes F4, you know? It's weird. I've probably played like maybe the King's Gambit 20 times. Um, in the last couple of years on Lee Chess, and every time I play the King's Gambit, I don't, th I don't think anyone plays Pawn Takes Pawn in like G5. 
Extremely rare. All right. So everybody plays the Falk beer, and I also do this. This is like a transposition that sort of avoids bishop c4. The b, what is the b? What is the b, anyway? Queen f3. Just kidding. We're not going to play queen f3. So knight c3, queen h4, check, king e2. Seems a little bit dangerous. Could be fun, though. Unsafe. So you're supposed to play knight f3. h4. Stopping queen h4. I had a game in this the other day. The pawn to bear. Pawn to bear. P-A-W-N. Even Magnus has been known to play this with white. Okay. What am I supposed to do? Like bishop c4 on knight d5? I believe so. What else is there? I think with black I've played like bishop d6 here. But knight d5 is, is normal. Maybe I'm supposed to take on d5? Play d4, actually. But it feels slow. You can even take and play bishop e2. Take and play d4. Queen e4 check. I don't know. I have a vague, re vague recollection of Magnus playing this line in some important game. And I've also played this in Blitz, but with black. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that on bishop c4, I don't know the theory, but I assume that on bishop c4, knight c3 is pretty much mandatory. How about the end game? <laughs> knight c3, bc. Queen e4 check. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. Probably main line. Bishop f5, c3. There's something artificial about queen e4. King f2, the only move to consider. I wasn't aware of that. I mean, call me. Call me old school. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually prefer to castle when it's possible. Do you know anything about this infinite flash chess? Spassky did that Sarawan once. As well as teaching chess, we promote high level grammar here on my stream not only like in my own talking but in the chat as well white square bishop's not important here obviously black is about to get blasted check I don't know if this is the best move, but it ain't bad. So he has a defense now? No. He get a couple pieces for the rook. I mean, whatever, for the queen. Queen, rook. Okay, so technically, 
technically black has a knight, a rook, and a pawn for the queen. But he hath no coordination. We have to strike fast. Bishop f4, anyway, I thought about it. I was unconvinced. <clears throat> this has got to be good. I had a kind of bad hallucination there. Hopefully I'm still winning. Dangerous Ombre. Guy. I'm telling you, none of these games I won against him were ever really easy. Even though he only has one point out of 13. You remember when you play someone and they always play you tough. The last draw I remember, it was a. Uh, like Steinitz Roy Lopez or something. I was scared I was going to lose that. It was a really weird position at the end. You see that? So now bishop takes f4, queen f5 check first. Definitely didn't play this optimally. Optimally. Yellow Dragoon, Fide Master. What's up? Rook F8. Took, took his stuff. Found the move, Uber driver. Good job. I will not stop till he's arrested. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks to um, Why So Serious. And Clowers Universe for raiding the stream. We've got a record number of viewers for certainly for a weird Wednesday stream lately. This was a fun game though. We're trying to play fun openings. King's Gambit, Latvian Gambit, Schliemann. Very classical, romantic era openings. When we can. Too hard for black to hold this together. Even against my momentous rating of 2300, it's too much. 
Win a rook. Is there mate? Maybe. There is. Maybe there is. Check. Alright, he resigned. What was the deal with the opening? Let's take a look at this for a second before we go on to the next game. I just want to see if I know what I'm doing or not. Knight f3 is best move. So here apparently bishop c4 is more popular. Almost nobody plays my move knight c3. It makes sense. I mean, you really should get the king side developed. I'm not a big fan of the bishop on c4. But I don't think there's anything wrong with knight c3, actually. So black plays knight takes d5, and there is no Carlson game. There's Spassky versus Pytel from 1974. A couple of games. And most people did play knight takes d5, but I think this is also interesting. Knight takes c3, you have to play... Wow, two people played dc going into the end game. That is weird. I mean, I can see how this end game would be okay for white, but I can't imagine playing it for a win. Nibosha Nishkevich. And a couple of strong Italian and Albanian players there. So, anyway, that's also interesting. Knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, d4. So I was wrong. There's no Carlson game. Some other guys. Johnny Hector versus Axel Smith from 2017. Queen e4 is weird. You're not supposed to play that. I had the feeling that was wrong. So actually the engine says g5 here. Theoretical novelty. Nobody had the guts to play that. But black should be fine. This is a bad move. And so infinite flash said king f2. How do you know so much about this? Now we're threatening bishop b5 check right away. Infinite, I didn't know you were like a king's gambit aficionado. Yeah, I mean, king f2, that's a pretty damaging threat. Johnny Hector always plays weird openings. Every day is a Wednesday for him. So apparently this is just a mistake. I'm still better after bishop b2, but it's basically pretty lame. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm not even better. Black's careful here. A waste of time. The next move, this is, you got a castle, and everything's okay. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> Interesting. Merle Dixon gifted a tier one sub to Manus Manuspurs 2002. Um, guys who are new or are subscribers to the stream, just so you know, um, Thursday nights I do a stream which is my subscriber stream. So if you do subscribe to the stream, you can submit a game. We have like 10 or 12 people, up to 10 or 12 people submit games on Thursday nights for my stream. So we go over the games here together on the stream live for our subscriber stream. So if you are a subscriber, you can do that. You can submit a game before tomorrow night at 6.30 to my account, Sparkle Horse on Lee Chess, and I will be happy to, to include that game and go over it live on the stream tomorrow night. I will send a message out to the subscribers reminding you guys about tomorrow's subscriber stream. Okay, also check out my uh, YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube, where I do upload all the streams. Mandel Broset. Well, he's only got 77 games, but that's, that's close enough. All right. Here comes the ambulance for my next opponent, hopefully. Ghetto birds were flying this morning too. E45, kind of the theme today. We're playing classically. It's hard to play something weird against the... against the um, bishop's opening. But I did have a friend who played this move once. Reminded me of Fuchsia's suggestion of A5. I really should have played f5, though. That would have been thematic. That would have been, like, way more thematic. 
f5, bishop g8, rook g8, queen h5, check, g6, queen h7, rook g7, and it's probably better for black. I think I looked at that once with an engine. <clears throat> But I mean, f5 might still be a move. If I does something slow, like knight to c3. Two queen g5. I wasn't aware of that. Yes, now this... This was played in a game that a friend of mine lost with black many, many years ago, I remember. He kind of blamed losing the game on 2c6. But I don't think that's... I don't think that's even good for white. Now one mistake you might have here is playing knight f6, which is a very nice pawn sacrifice. Knight f6, queen e5, check, bishop e7. But it does get mated in one. So I'm trying to remember what I looked at. Maybe d5, queen e5, check. Bishop e7. d5, queen e5, check, bishop e7. Pawn takes pawn, knight f6, d6. And then I'd have to trade queens, which sucks. Now I'm down in an endgame. Looks like the last game. I mean, obviously, I could play queen e7, but I was hoping for something better. Knight h6. <laughs> no, we're not going to recover from that. Is there any way I can play d5 and not trade queens? I mean, even if he just takes on d5, actually d5, queen e5, bishop e7, pawn takes pawn, knight f6, d6, that's the problem. I have to go into an ending, and I'm just down a pawn there. Seems like this is almost objectively forced. So knight f3, d6, knight g5, and then knight h6. I don't really like black's game. I like your thinking, Uber driver. That's very creative. This is a brilliant idea. King e7. The bond cloud. Bond cloud reversed. <laughs> Deferred. Queen e5 mate. Basically, I have a kind of bad Philidor. That's what you get for playing c6. I, I thought there was better for black than this. When I looked at this, it's very strange. I should have played f5. Next time I'm playing f5 here. Just a stronger move than c6. <laughs> and bishop g8 is definitely a bad move. But is white's best move after f5? You could play something weird like queen h5 check, g6, queen e2. But now, it almost seems like black's okay. Our intended fianchetto. It's the king's Indian. Not really a correct game by black. But I'm curious. I swear I saw something better than this. 
It's weird. Okay, trading queens is not not dangerous for me. I mean, I've equalized. Practically equalized. Stockfish says to take the knight on f5. That seems particularly relevant. Asabe needs some sleep. Don't neglect your sleep, my friend. Alright, we'll go bishop g7. I'm going to have to watch out for stuff like attacking my d6 pawn. But I still don't know what you're talking about, <clears throat> Mr. Asturbate. Asturbate. White's still slightly better. Bishop c4, queen g5. That, that doesn't seem right. I think we're solidly neglecting classical principles there. Just randomly weaken my queen side. My concern is actually that white could, could turn around and play d4 effectively. The infinite flash, like b5 is so unnecessary. Using our pawns to attack those pieces outside the pawn chain and drive them back. This is very classical. Smile. The pawn smile. All pawns. All pawns will move. F pawn will move too. Is it overextension or is it punishing the opponent for having pawns outside their pawn chain. This break with d4. I think a3 is right. That seems like the best move. This is like his only idea. Pawns against pieces. Pawns are people too. That'll teach you to develop routinely. It sounds like Animal Farm or something, Uber Driver. Honda's favorite book. Very relevant. So stopping f4. Now obviously castling is is only illegal in some territories. <laughs> only legal in some territories. You can pull a fast one on your opponent. <laughs> As has been done in tournament play. I mean if people are capable of just missing pieces hanging all together. They're definitely capable of letting you castle here. All right. I could see my king getting checkmated on d8 by bishop b6 or something. You're missing the reference. I don't know. Something about bad and good. Well, that's a different story now. He still kind of got the d4 thing at some moment. Now, but I think now there's some just tactical hole. There's a tactical hole in the bucket.
Good thing that Bishop D B6 is not check. In the Lafayette Gambit, Black wins if his king reaches a6. It sounds like a new version of chess. Guys, we still have 30 minutes left, so time for a couple more games. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks again to Why So Serious and Manus for the raids. White resigned. This looks bad. But... I think that's one thing a lot of people have trouble with is this is my first round game of my arena tournament yesterday, um, my game with, with Morwa. I felt like his, his weakness was in the handling of the pawns. Pawns are the soul of chess. So apparently I do have to play queen e7. Wow, and I even have d5 here. That's crazy. Black is better, according to the engine. <laughs> There's a lot of tricks here, you know. All I remember is, like, checking this and, and noting that, like, c6 is actually not so bad. Knight c3, f5. But... Seriously, this was literally played by Steinitz. So if you try anything fancy, you get a bad position. You need to just develop sensibly here with white. Okay. Thanks everybody for subscribing. Now, Amor, Amar, sorry, Amar has some inconsistent ratings there, but... um. No, I'm not accepting rated challenges now. So if you want to challenge me, just challenge me to a casual game. Especially if you've got a 500 differential between your ratings. Prefer it to be casual. What do we got, guys? Should we go to the well and find a victim in the... Create a game? Lobby? The lobby, that's what it's called. Goat Kingdom. There's very few games. What's up? Everything's rated. No casual. Smitten, Weakling Chess, and Roberto started following. It's weird. Roberto followed me the other day. Now he's following me again. What does he do? He like unfollows me and follows me again. Why is a 40 year old man on a children's website? A children's website? I mean, finding victims is fine, but calling Lee Chess a children's website, I think you should be, you should be strung up and tortured for that. Infinite Flash, how dare you call Lee Chess a children's website? Ponda will take care of it. Ponda will, will take care of the punishment. Manus is smitten. All right. So anyway, I just wanted to get some more challenges here. Casual, 10.0. Just kidding. This is a children's website, so keep that in mind. What do we got for casual challenges? Two plus two, that's a little too fast. Could do a rated challenge. If I don't think they're sketchy. Here's a 5-0, but he disappeared. Disappeared. Guys, we have time for two more challenges. 5-0 rated, 6-0 rated. 5-0 casual, that's chess 960. I don't want to do chess 960 today because it's weird Wednesday. Can't play openings in chess 960. Come on. Not many challenges. It's really quiet. Actually, I'm the only streamer left. This is like the witching hour on leechess.org. All the childrens are asleep, infinite chess. When people ask me in the game chat how old I am, I always answer eight.
I have no way of guessing your age, Fuchsia. I, I would assume you're older than eight. But you never know. People are, they're, they're pretty bright by eight these days. Um, but if you know who Johnny Hector is, Severius Snape, seven zero, cla, cla, can't talk. Let's do that. Severius Snape, seven zero. Weird openings. We do feel like the Magnus Carlson. I've never done this. Oh. I just wanted to bring my knight back to g8, but white can't be bothered to play e5. All right, now what do we do? Now we're stuck. I'm gonna play like b, no, b5 doesn't work. A delayed, let's do this. What is this? This is another Fuchsia opening. Fuchsia, do you play the Karo Khan? It's like a bad Karo Khan. b5. This is really garbage. I think I've gone too far this time, guys. I've gone too far. It was okay till now. My opponent's 1949, actually. They're actually 2100 in Rapid. It's a pretty new account, too. I wanted to play B4, but now it's like pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes knight, b4, pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight, pawn takes g7. Bishop takes g7, I lose a pawn. So I have to do this. This is just bizarre. Dropped a, dropped a pawn on b5. That sucks. No. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, you're the Karakon player. Not a Karakon player. Yeah, I knew it. I knew, I knew you would be. I knew you would be. Now b5 is really hanging now. Queen b6, probably best. When in doubt, develop. It's a bad French. This is how I would play when surprised in the opening. <laughs> the accelerated smile defense. It's a lot of pawn moves. Always a lot of pawn moves. Ooh, that's a nice bishop. That's getting out to a6. I think he's trying to play like a4 on me or something. Just the standard French, of course. Actually, Fuchsia would be happy with both sides. C3 versus C6. What eight-year-old wouldn't be happy with this position? You can, you can play this. This is a total eight-year-old opening. An eight-year-old who just learned how to move the pieces. Inspired by I told, like, last week how I had a blitz game against Kirill Gurgiev, who played d4, c6, c4, b5 against me. I was sort of stunned and sat there for, like, a minute. Eventually, like, pulled myself together. <laughs> but I lost. I was too upset psychologically. Get to play like a legendary player and they, they do something ridiculous. Anyway, that's life. Is d6 a mistake or a good move? Looks okay. It's turning into a normal London system with the bishop on d2. It's a d2 London. Is this a good idea? Probably not. <clears throat> I 
There goes my king side. G6 or H6? I prefer H6. We're going to have to be careful. Severia Snape has outdone himself with queen. Queen there. Back to A8 anyway. Oh, now I understand. Wait, no, I don't understand. Was I just toast now? If he plays knight g5? I think I'm just toast. Instant toast. A new kind of dessert, breakfast, whatever. I'm a little bit flustered here. I think he would have just ended me with knight g5. Actually, did he have it the move before? Didn't have it the move before because I wasn't castled yet. But now it's like devastating. There's no move. I have to play g6 and then queen h3. That's the point of queen d3, actually. He has this follow-up queen h3, and now there's like no move for black at all. I'm lucky to be alive here. I was dead. Yeah, totally dead. Acerbate, rook a7. Reactivating. Maybe we can take him out on time. It's a good thing this is not a rated game, guys. Let's get one more challenge from the from the viewers. We've got time for one more challenge from the viewers. Come on, we can get one before this is over. Look how easy I am to beat. Now he plays knight g5. If only Severius Snape knew the hot and tots were toast. If you played knight g5 before, there was literally no move. Oh my gosh. Always play h6. What'd you do? <laughs> Accidental timeout. Where did they find this? Where did they find this moderator? New subscriber. That's why I pay Infinite Flash the big money. F4. He's trying to, to hide. He's trying to hijack the stream. What's the word I'm looking for? You, you removed the timeout. Good job. What happened? I don't even really want to take that knight, frankly. It looks kind of dangerous. <clears throat> I think I'd prefer not to take it. Well, it almost feels like I have to, objectively. Stop being a chicken. Afraid of ghosts and other ghouls and goblins. <laughs> it's not Halloween, kids. Yeah, but that's why Rook A7 was so critical. Asabi taught me everything I know. There is a mate, though. So we need to be a little bit careful. Maybe I have to take. I have to defend carefully here. 
98. Maybe just like rook f7. Shut him down. But 98's probably good. Just to be on the safe side. Timed you out for politely asking the challenge. How dare you? It's not right to be polite in my channel. And we know there's usually something wrong if people do that. It's the first sign. That's the first sign of really trouble, politeness. You can make a game challenge. Manus, absolutely. Five three through seven three. Any any time control. Five three five four five five six three six four six five. Did you send me one? Yeah. All right. That's close enough. It's close enough. Three plus two. Five plus two is fine. Yeah, that's close enough. All right. Usually five three through seven plus three, but five two is cool. So, this is good. We've not played a lot of games with black today. Actually, the last one was. But nobody played d4, did they? I haven't had one d4. So I like to play c5 with all the people who play the London system. Wow, he didn't think twice on that principled move. A lot of beginners are afraid to play d5 and expand and take the space. So that's a good sign for white. Uh, White's understanding of the game is solid if he plays d5 right out of the gate. Oh, you like this? This was played against me once by the Syrian Fide Master Sati Husari. And I jokingly said, after that game who's sorry now bishop f4 all right that's reasonable the clarendon court didn't you suggest this merle it was uber driver Uber driver says one F5. Oh, you said one F5. No, I meant two F5. I thought you said two F5. My bad. <laughs> this, this is great. It's a kind of Leningrad Dutch. Leningrad Dutch with C5, essentially. Now it is really Leningrad Dutch. Leningrad Dutch Banco hybrid. No. That's a little bit totally over the top. Yeah, I don't want this bishop coming to e5. We have a huge weakness on e6. This has been doing a good job. It's called the Gingy India. It does look like that. It does look like that infinite flash. Unfortunately, like my bishop's not on b4 with the knight on c3. The two duck attack. Get your ducks limed up, limed up. Get them limed up. This is the first move I'm kind of skeptical of. Seems really early <clears throat> to develop the queen to b3. We're just taking care of fundamentals. But it's not a huge, huge mistake or something. Actually. Queen a5, knight d2. It's actually kind of useful. I mean, attacking b6. Okay, black can do a lot of stuff. Just trade queens. 
My winning percentage with trading queens is extremely, <laughs> extremely high. Where's move 11? He's sleeping. The double duck. Yeah, that's my friend when we were when we were beginners. One of my best friends who learned chess with me. Later, gave up playing, I guess. But he said he had this game where he didn't know what the Dutch. I mean, he didn't know what the um, what the Dutch was. He played d4, but we were like thirteen hundred. He didn't know the names of all the openings. He didn't know what the Dutch was. Some more obscure openings. So when he played d4 no that's not what it was no, I'm telling the wrong story he must have been black he must have been black and his opponent played the birds opening that's what it was he was black his opponent played the birds opening and he played f5 in response to the birds opening and he called that the double dutch we're like what are you doing well, I thought this was a symmetrical English. <laughs> no, that's C4. Um, you could just go after that bishop on f4 with knight h5. It would be a gingy Indian. Bishop takes c3. Now it's too late. I don't want to be playing bishop takes c3 infinite flash anymore. With that b file. B file. Knight f3, g5, bishop g3, murderous Spartan, double ducky. So f4, f5 is not called the double dutch, surprisingly. So I guess play with the pawns is what really differentiates masters from amateurs. But Smitten is doing well for his bullet rating, but bullet doesn't really tell us too much. Bishop takes c3 would be no good. I might be able to play one more game. Morphe, this is absolutely Morphe style. Now if h4, this does open the bishop. What I want to do is play b5. Now I'm going to take <clears throat> could actually play f4 there. I missed this move altogether. White doesn't really have any forward plans there. Now he's... Hopefully up to screwed. There's always the B file. We've got doubled rooks. And the key is to play B5. Obviously white structure is bad. Did Morphe play the Dutch defense? I mean, how often did Morphe face d4? That would be an interesting statistical <laughs> thing to research. Not very difficult to find out, probably. A handful of games. I mean, certainly had to face it offhand. You know, not like non-official match games or whatever. 
Well, it wasn't played much. But there had to be, like, some people who played it. King B3. Next. <clears throat> I might have helped him. Maybe I should have taken that pawn while I could. He resigned. Um, Brendan doesn't have games. So Unicorn or Airborne Warrior. Or Amun. Amun has challenged me to raid it. Okay, let's play Airborne Warrior. He donated to support the stream early. This is our last game for the stream today it's been supportive of the stream for our last game all right speaking of d4 let's play d4 but something fun the sun gambit was a thing then was it or was it like later a little later speaking of the staunton gambit g4 yeah let's do g4 i like that Korchnoi. I played other weird moves. Queen d3, a relation. Foreign relation. It's the Pirts. It's the Fianchetto Pirts. Sana was born before Morphe. Um, I don't think so. Harwitz versus Morphe, there was three Dutch defenses. Interesting. Makes you want to play, um, makes you want to play the Dutch. Actually, one of my students, one of my more advanced students has been playing D4, D5 and having trouble getting an active game against lower rated players. And I said to him, why do you play d4, d5 against lower rated players? It's a solid defense, but I don't think it's really necessarily the best way to play for a win as black. So he immediately suggested the Dutch. And I think the Dutch is hard to play, but it's certainly a good try. It, it takes, I think there's a lot, like a really long learning curve, probably with the Dutch. But it's probably worthwhile if you put the time in. But you're going to take some beatings occasionally. Some of the like obscure, more more obscure, like uh, anti-Dutch lines, but I think in general it's it's like Black's most aggressive move against against D four. I always wanted to play the Dutch, but I never. Superdriver says Morphe faced D four eight times, <laughs> a grand total of eight times. That's crazy. <clears throat> Now, I guess if bishop g4, we could consider a developing move, queen d3. Or we could just pin ourselves. Options to castle on both sides. Bzz. Bzz. Really difficult to decide. Knight f3, knight e2, f4. <laughs> this is weird not having a g-pawn. Where is my g-pawn? So Starton is older. I stand corrected. It's a good thing I'm not a chess historian. So that's been confirmed. Gary is gone.
He looks like he's just gonna castle king's side, I would assume. I just wanted to play this move a little too much. Hyper aggressive. Ninety five. White center superiority is central superiority is serious. He's like preparing to play what C five. Where am I going to put my king? So we're going to end up castling kingside after all. That's weird. I guess knight f5, like c5, knight f5. It is like a Philidor after that, totally. You guys think there's any coincidence? I don't think it's coincidence. I think that airborne warrior is trying to play a Philidor. Philidor and the Dutch. Actually, yeah, you can play d6 on move one against everything. That's a repertoire. Any Simon Williams fans out there? Simon was like advocating some sort of old Indian <laughs> setup against everything. I thought that's kind of a weird thing. Kind of a passive thing to advocate. I mean, I guess it's okay for like absolute beginners. I didn't like queenside castling because the avalanche of these pawns is coming down. It just looks good. He has to play that pretty much forced. It's a good Sicilian <laughs> for white. What if I just take and play e5? This looks virtually over. It's a really bad Steinitz now. Buy my DVDs. We like the Indian accent better, Infinite Flash. We want the advertisement to sound like Apu from The Simpsons. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the intermezzo strikes again. Another fine gold. I think they should have, it should be like an Iron Man competition, as I said earlier. With fine gold and, and Simon Williams, it's not enough just chess. Maybe like mud wrestling, chess, and hot dog eating. Like a three, three, uh, three event contest. Where is Ben Feingold? <laughs> What's up, everybody? We're gonna see you. <laughs> see you. I have to go search for Ben Feingold now. I will catch you guys later. So, take care. Have a great one. Um, we'll be back tomorrow night with our subscriber stream with Panda. Don't forget to buy my DVDs, okay?
Learn how to play passive defense for everything. Ponda, that was horrible. Like, the first part was all right, but after that. Buy my DVDs. I will see you guys later. <clears throat> Don't forget to buy Panda's DVDs. And um, subscribe to stream tomorrow night at 6.30 CEST. And we'll continue the search as, um, as we prepare for tomorrow night's stream. So thanks again to... Uh, Thanks again to Why So Serious, to our new, um, to our new subscriber, Manus. We'll see you guys um, next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.